Are you struggling with using async await in your UI applications? What are the possible issues when working with it? The potential deadlock when using async await? Want to understand what configure await actually means? If your answer is yes to any of these questions, then stick around. In this tutorial, I'm going to explain everything you need to know to use async await with configure await properly. To make things really simple to explain, I have created a WPF UI application and this UI application is not going to use MVVM or another type of complex mechanisms. I'm just using a stack panel with rich text box and button. This button is going to download some data from the internet. Actually, we have the web document service. It, it is a wrapper over HTTP clients get string. And when I click the button, it should download the URLs data from the internet and assign it to our rich text box. So our button click operation called load click is actually the asynchronous operation. It means for the async way we are not blocking our UI. We already learned about async await. And if you want to dive into details of async await with async state mesh, and just check my um, previous tutorial about it. But for now, we are going to learn things really simple. And I guess that you already watched my video. So the purpose here is when I click this load button, UI should be responsive and it should be possible for me to move it and uh, it should behind the scenes download the data. So let's do it when I click this button. So I'm moving the interface and behind the scenes, it is continuing to download data and assign it to my rich text box. So this is really simple example to explain uh, behind the scenes operations. So let's try to understand what happens. In this case, we have asynchronous operation. For the asynchronous operation, we have some sort of synchronous slices. So the first operation to the await keyword is going to our synchronous operation. So we have synchronous operation here. We have actual asynchronous operation. The, we will learn that async await is not going to use a thread behind the scenes. Actually, the operation system input output bound APIs by default support the asynchronous operations. For that reason, we are just forwarding from the runtime to the operation system the request uh, to make it asynchronous. And when the operation is done, operation system will notify our runtime and our runtime starting from the await after a await is going to create a task continuation. This is really important. So this is our synchronous operation. This is our original asynchronous operation that doesn't use thread. And after the await is going to be our task continuation. So the question here is in which thread it is going to continue. Is it in our UI thread, scheduled thread, or is it going to be run in a threadable thread? So let's try to understand it. For that reason, I created a um, slide for you. So first, when you initiate input output bound operation, in my case, it was a um, get data from the internet using async await, the code we learned that doesn't block the current thread. Instead, it registers with a .NET runtime as a callback, which can handle it asynchronously. The .NET runtime forwards the input output request to the appropriate operation system level API, which manages the actual input output bound operation. So the operation system itself is responsible to check if the operation is done or not from the asynchronous perspective. Once the input output operation completes, the operation system will not via our runtime, in this case, .NET runtime. The runtime then schedules the continuous continuation of asynchronous operation. This is really important. So after a wait, all this functionality is going to be wrapped to the task continuation. You can check my uh, async await deep dive video where I explain async state machine and you will understand how it, it is happening. And the runtime determines where to execute the continuation based on configure await. Yes means we have some sort of configure await functionality. Let's try to understand what actual configure await means. 
In our code example, we already have configure await functionality. So where is this? From the await keyword, when you call it, you already have by default behavior called configure await configure await equal to true actually having configure await true or not having it doesn't make sense because uh, by default we are using configure await equal value equal to true what does it mean it means after the asynchronous operation when operation system notifies our runtime our runtime will create a task continuation and this task continuation is going to be run in our scheduled thread in my case the operation was scheduled by the ui thread it means the continuation will be done in our ui thread okay so let's run it and check if everything is working as expected so i'm running this application i'm doing the same operation like load and try to move so the ui is responsive the, the application is able to download the data but what if i assign false to the configure weight value it means i am planning to have a task continuation not in our ui thread what will happen so let's run and see what type of exception we are getting in this case let's click the load button and boom invalid operation exception the calling thread cannot access this object because a different thread owns it what does actually it mean? This is really simple. The problem here is we are trying to continue this line of code in our separate thread from the thread pool, but the component used here is actually owned by the UI thread. So it is not possible for us to use the another threads components from the thread post thread so this is actually our ui threads component it was created in our ui thread so we should continue the process in our ui thread so in this case this is really important especially when you develop ui applications to understand how configure await works so let's try to run another example and try to understand what type of deadlock we can uh, see in our application actually so i'm going to comment this uh code blocks and comment out the another lines this is actually the same operation but in this case i'm just going to get the task rather than it is value so there is no await keyword like this i'm just going to get the actual task and wait it actually uh, in most cases we are not doing the task wait but in some cases it is possible for us to use task wait for now for the testing purpose i am just blocking the ui using the tasks wait functionality okay what happens here i'm just going to run this line this line actually is going to schedule a task okay we are scheduling a task and after that directly we are blocking our ui thread so by default we have configure await behavior it means configure await will wait our ui to be unblocked to continue but my ui is already blocked so we have deadlock in this case so it will not be possible for us to see this message in our ui let's run it and see how this application is going to have a deadlock situation so let's click to the load and boom that's all we have a deadlock case here okay so how to resolve this case well for the configure weight we have true as a default value but i realized that in my case i actually don't need the ui component interaction because i don't have a weight keyword i don't have the continuation actually so when i wait the operation will be completely done and this 
line of code will be executed by default in our UI thread. So there is no need to have task continuation to think about task continuation. So what I'm going to do actually, let's go to the get content here and let's call the configure await equal to false because the UI thread in my case actually the resource consuming thread the schedule thread is not important for me so i'm just running the wpf application again and let's hit load and well that's all now we don't have a deadlock case so the, just remember that when you are interacting with ui components you need to use configure await with true the actual the default value for the configure await but when you are developing a third part libraries not depending from the technology like wpf isb.net core console so you are actually working on the third part libraries just use configure weight equal to false thank you so much for joining me today if you enjoyed this content don't forget to hit subscribe button if you haven't already give the like button a gentle tab and if you found value in this video consider sharing it with your friends your support means the world to me until the next time take care and happy exploring